Hey guys, MEP guy here, and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to organize your views on your sheet without using any special plugins. Now there's going to come a lot of times where you're going to have multiple sheets throughout your floors, and you're going to want to organize these uh, views on your sheet, and you're going to want to make sure they're all consistent in the right places. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Um, I've actually created this uh, template file for you. It's actually part three of my annotations and using Keynotes in Revit and I will we'll, um, have this template file for you to download on my website mepguy.com. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to just eyeball um, you know where you want to put your your sheet or your views on your sheet. So you know for instance we just have a hodgepodge of views and schedules and we want to organize those. So what I would recommend is just getting them to a good spot where you guys you know like it. So maybe something like here and then we'll just click on this view and we'll just organize that and, and it, it's very helpful to use your arrow keys when you're doing this so I'm going to just use that and then I'm just going to use this and I'm just going to you know select it right there and actually Revit aligns them for us pretty good so now we can select both of our views like this we can hold control and we can just kind of nudge these around and maybe that is something I like. Maybe I want to bring it up a little bit. And that looks pretty good. So I want these views to be like this for every single sheet consistently, okay? So I have multiple floors. I have uh, right now in this little project, I have a A101 sheet, an A105, and an A109. So I have multiple floors in this project. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to do this. So the one thing you'll notice um, on all of our sheets, we have one thing that is consistent and that's our title block okay so we can utilize our title block to help us organize these views so all I'm going to do is I'm going to click my title block I'm going to right click and I'm going to edit this family so I didn't need to right click guys so now Revit's going to open the title block family and we're just going to move it over to the side I'm just going to drag it over We're going to hit ZA to zoom all and now I have my title block family over here and I'm going to go ahead and uh, manipulate um, this title block a little bit. So I have kind of everything organized in this view so I'm going to go back to this view and I'm actually going to use a little trick and I'm going to go ahead and go to annotate and go to detail line. Now I'm going to use, it doesn't really matter which type of lines, we can use thin lines, I'm going to use a little square. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make a square around this sheet notes. Okay? Something like this. We're gonna hit escape. Now we're gonna select this and we're just gonna move this box where we can snap to it right here and we're gonna snap it right there. We're gonna hit escape. And we can just go ahead and kind of move this into the spot we want it. We could be perfect if we want. We can uh, dimension these and get it perfect, but that looks pretty good for now. Okay, so let's continue on. I'm going to uh, click, well, I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to use a detail line. Now, I've already done this, but I'm going to go ahead and click into this view. I'm going to delete these little guys. I'm going to explain what those are. So, what we can do, since we want to be able to select the view, we have to add something called a reference plane. So, let me illustrate that. I'm going to go to detail line and I'm going to try to draw a box around this. Now you can see right now I can't snap to anything with this box. Like I can get close and, and maybe go here and kind of do that but let's say we want to get perfectly on this corner right here. So the way we do that is we just add a reference plane inside this view. So I'm going to just hit escape. I'm going to double click into this view. We're going to go up to the architecture tab and we're going to go ahead and go to reference plane. And I'm just going to go ahead and click this little line right here. And we're going to just make this little tick mark thing. We're just going to put one there. And we're just going to select. We're going to hit escape. Do another one right here. Maybe to right here. And that's just going to be our little reference. The cool thing about this is this is going to be consistent throughout our whole project. Okay. And what do I mean by that? So I'm going to double click out of that view. And as you can see, it updated right here in this sanitary view as well, because this is the same point in our, our Revit project, okay? So now, the beautiful part about that is 
I can go up to annotate I can go to detail line and I can click this uh, little rectangle button and now when I'm on the sheet I can actually snap to this okay that's what reference planes allow us to do they allow us to snap to it now I can't slap, snap to the walls or anything but I can snap to these reference planes so I'm gonna snap to that guy right there and I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of you know eyeball what this would look like maybe it would be about this big hit escape and let's just do the same thing we're gonna actually copy this box now so I'm gonna use my tab key we're gonna select the whole box and I'm gonna copy this and we're gonna copy it from this reference plane up here and we're just gonna copy it right down to this one hit escape alright so now we have our detail lines in our boxes so what we can do is we can actually select those and I'm gonna filter them and the only thing we need is our lines so we're just gonna hit OK and so now we have all of our detail lines that we just drew in this uh, this sheet and we're gonna just go ahead and copy those to the clipboard and we're gonna double click into our family our title block family and we're just going to paste those aligned to the current view and look at that so now we have um, these basically into our title block so when we load our title block back into the project it will have these lines inside the title block so let's load it back into our project and actually I'm going to open up a, another floor plan to really illustrate this point so I'm just going to open up my maybe my fifth floor and right now I kind of have these let's just say I have them all over the place and nothing's really lined up and as you can see we still have our reference planes there because they're consistent throughout our whole project so I'm going to go ahead and load this title block into the project so I'm going to click into that and we're going to load it into the project I'm going to overwrite the existing of course it went back to my first floor alright overwrite existing and let's go to our A105 and you're going to see these boxes are going to show up now so now all we have to do is click into our um, floor plan right here our view and we're just going to move it and since we have the reference planes we can just move it from this point and we just can snap it to this point up here look at that that was pretty easy we're going to hit escape we're just going to go ahead and select this view we're going to click right here and we're going to snap this guy right there looks like that okay so this is looking good and we're going to put our schedule in the right spot so we're just going to move this and we're going to pick that point that Revit allows us to pick right here and we're going to put it right in that corner hit escape now we've just done that to our 105 sheet so let's do it to our 109 sheet as well and I'm just gonna go ahead and full screen this so you guys can see it better so this one's pretty close we're gonna click into that we're just gonna move this guy move it from there to there hit escape and we're gonna move it from here right there to Let's zoom in. Maybe we'll move it here first so we can kind of get a better move. That point to that point. That looks good. Hit escape. And let's make sure our schedule gets moved to the right spot. Just going to move this from this point right to this point. Hit escape. So we would do that throughout our whole project. I mean, it does take a little bit of time, but I do think it's probably the easiest way other than uh, using, you know, some kind of plugin or something. Okay, so now we have our title block. So I'm just going to move that right to the side. Well, I'm going to try to move it to the side. Right there. Hit ZA to zoom all. And now we can go ahead and just delete these boxes. But before we do that, there is something we can do to kind of preserve these box locations because if we go ahead and delete them and then we decide we want another uh, to add another sheet we don't want to have to draw these boxes again okay so here's what I would recommend so what we can do is go to create and we can use these things called reference lines 
Now what a reference line does, um, we can basically use just a box, but a reference line kind of acts like a reference plane. And we're just going to put these reference lines inside our title block. I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to go ahead and select all of those detail lines and I'm going to filter them. And we're just going to select our detail lines. We're going to hit OK. And then we're just going to go ahead and hit the delete command. And now they're gone. So the only thing left is these reference lines. So we're going to load that back into our project. We're going to overwrite the existing. And the lines should disappear. Okay, I'm uh, not really. Oh, yeah, because the first floor we drew these lines in. All right, so let's look at our 105 plan. As you can see, they're gone. But they actually still exist. All right, so I'm going to show you guys. So if I move this guy over here, and now I need to move this back to that position, watch this. If I move this using these reference planes right here, I'm going to snap to those. Now, if I move up here, you're going to see something. Look, that reference line actually starts to show up. And there's one also over here. So we're just going to go to this edge right here, and we're just going to snap. So these guys still exist, but they don't show up in the title black, which is kind of nice. So, you know, be careful doing this because you're, you know, your BIM manager or whoever's managing your Revit stuff at your um, company might yell at you for doing something like this. So you can always just delete these things. But it is a good practice, even as a BIM manager, to maybe kind of organize your sheets in some way and then just, you know, let everybody know that this is how, like, you know, standard you guys are going to do things. So um, that's just a little trick that I've learned throughout the years um, to kind of... Um, align all my sheets and my views up uh, consistently without using any kind of software. Now you can use some plugins and I would love to hear in the comments uh, what your favorite plugins are. I know there's some free ones and I'm, I'm, I know they're very easy to use but you know honestly I just have done this a lot so I'm just used to doing things the hard way I guess. So anyway um, I did want to go over a couple things. Um, I'm gonna have this template file um, for download on my website, mepguy.com. Let me go ahead and get rid of these detail lines on this sheet right here. I'm just going to select them, filter them, and we're just going to go like that, and we're just going to delete those from this sheet. So I just wanted to go over on the A101 plan I've created for you guys. Um, we're just going to exit out of here. We're not going to save this family. So I've um, basically created all the annotations or pipe tags that you're ever going to pretty much need in most of your projects. Um, I've created uh, the pipe tag that rotates with the component. So we have this, uh, I'm going to click into this view, we have this you know, pipe tag that has the size of your pipe and it also has your system abbreviation and it also rotates uh, with the component. So if I create similar, it's rotating with that component. So it's going to look however uh, your pipe is oriented. So we can just add one here, add one here. So that looks good. I've also created these uh, pipe tags right here for you guys. And uh, this one says uh, it just has a suffix on it, DN for down. And I've also created one down here for the sanitary system that has an up and down suffix. And also one that just has an up suffix, okay? So there's three different tags in there. And you can just select them using the drop down for all these different tags. I also have this leader tag right here that's either a loop or an arrow. So right here is the loop and right there is the arrow. So you can use those however you'd like. And I've also created these smart notes for you guys. I've done uh, the MAP guy smart note uh, right here, this little 3D box. But I've also created this generic box and this generic circle. And those, um, right now, the MEP guy one is uh, being scheduled using a notebox schedule. So you can uh, access all this um, and check out the, you know, the file and do anything you like to it. It is going to be a template file. And the beautiful part about uh, using a template file is that anytime you guys open this and make any changes to it, you're going to have to save a new project. So you're never going to ruin um, any of this stuff. Now I do want to show you guys one more cool tip uh, for using this template file. So let's say you want to load all of these tags into your next project. Well the easiest way to do that, so I'm just going to go ahead and go to File, New, and we're just going to load a none project. Basically none means nothing's really loaded into these things, so we'll just use Imperial. And nothing's loaded in as you can see, and I'm going to go to my families, and just to show you guys, 
And right now under annotation families, there's no pipe tags loaded into this project. So all you have to do to load in the pipe tags for your project is just go into this guy, select all of these pipe tags, filter them, and you're just gonna wanna use generic annotations and pipe tags. Hit okay. And we're just gonna copy them to the clipboard. And we're just gonna go into our level one of our none project. And we're just gonna go ahead and modify and paste from the clipboard. We're gonna hit okay, it's saying like, things aren't gonna paste correctly, that's okay. And we're just gonna paste them wherever. And this is just like, you know, an example of your own project. And now you can see, look at all these annotation symbols that got loaded in. Even though I didn't have any pipe, all of my uh, pipe tags got loaded in along with the MEP guy uh, keynote right here. Go to annotate symbol. You can see the MEP guy uh, keynote thing is, is loaded right in. So all you have to do is go to that template file, select all the pipe tags and annotations you want, copy them to the clipboard, and paste them in any project you need. And there's one more thing I wanted to show you guys. So if I try to go ahead and tag a piece of pipe, we'll just tag this piece right here. And I'm gonna change this to that, let's just say the pipe size up tag. You're gonna see that it doesn't look like it's working, but it really is working. And that's just because we never added a, um, we didn't add any system abbreviation to this thing. So if we go to edit type, and we just add in our abbreviation SAN, hit OK. As you can see, the pipe tag is working correctly. We just needed to make sure we added our system abbreviation so that the uh, suffix up could show up. So I just wanted to note that real quick. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, make sure you check out mepguy.com. Um, I'll have this template file on there um, for you guys to check out. And I'll also include this video just um, if you want to watch it without commercials or whatever. I hope this video helped you and um, please uh, make sure to like the video if you actually liked it. And uh, please let me know any comments of future videos uh, you'd like to see in the future. One of my uh, recent viewers actually just uh, let me know that um, they use a special type of fixture um, when they're doing plumbing drawings. And I, and I do think that's a great idea. So in, in the next um, week or two, I will do a video on creating a custom uh, plumbing fixture family so that we can, um, you know, control visibility and we can do some really cool stuff. So look out for that video in the future.